me where my trust is without borders. Let me work upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be much stronger in the presence of my Savior.
Queen's Champions, and here are your weekly announcements. We are in the midst of our amazing March series, March Over Madness, and we pray that you have enjoyed the word that is going forth by our pastor, Otis J. Petaway III. Please join us for the remainder of this amazing series every Sunday, 10 a.m. and every Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. You don't want to miss it. We are still in the midst of our Lent season. Please join us starting March 25th as we go into our last week of fasting, where we dedicate ourselves to prayer three times daily, any hour during the day. Let's finish strong, champions. Continue to declutter and please bring your gently worn clothes and shoes to the church as we prepare to be a blessing to others. Our Good Friday worship service will be Friday, March 29th, 7 p.m., where our special guest will be Apostle Lisa James. You do not want to miss this powerful time of worship. Resurrection Sunday worship service will be Sunday, March 31st at 10 a.m. So break out your Easter's best and join us as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please join us as we go with our pastor to the Mount Moriah Temple of Deliverance Praise Center for their Family and Friends Day, where our very own Pastor Otis J. Pedaway III will be their guest preacher. That will be April the 14th at 3 p.m. at 318 Morrell Street, Baytown, Texas, where the founding pastor is Bishop Ronnie Thomas. Ladies of Victory, we are preparing and gearing up for our annual women's conference. This year's theme is Accelerate Her, and believe me, you do not want to miss what's in store. Our First Lady has worked tirelessly with her team to prepare an amazing two days worth of events. April 19th, that evening, we will have an event and worship service, and April 20th. Again, April 19th and 20th, two days of sisterhood, worship, praise, prayer, and breakthrough. Make sure you visit our website to get your tickets and your shirts at www.everythingvictory.org. Have a great week. Come on, y'all. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. We want to we want to get the word out. We are live. We're live. We're live. We're live here tonight. We're live here tonight. Come on, y'all. Get the word out. We're live. We're live. Good to see you. Good to see you. I see y'all in the chat. I see you in the chat. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going tonight. I'm trying to do it myself. I got my sharing started a little bit late, but let's do it. Let's do it, everybody, together tonight. Hit that share button. I, I, I see. I see we got three shares. Come on, y'all. We can we can get that number up tonight. It's Holy Week. It's it's Holy Week. Let's get let's get them shares up tonight, y'all. I'm, I'm I'm excited about it. Let's get them shares up tonight. Uh, we are are excited about what God is saying to and through our ministry. Let's let's get the word out that we are we are live. We are live. We're live. We're live tonight, y'all. Get the word out. Tell everybody. Tell Lottie Dottie and every, everybody. We live. We live. We live. We live. We live. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, y'all. Y'all, come on, y'all. We in. We in here. Get in here. Get in here. Like they used to say when we was when we was getting in the car. Get in here. Get in here. Get in here. Get in the car. Don't miss the ride. Don't miss the ride, y'all. Come on. All right. <clears throat> We've had our announcements. We've had. Our, our opening. Thank each and every one of you all for joining us. Let's continue to pray for the family of Sister Mays. Uh, we uh, found out about her passing. I wanted to share the information out as soon as possible. Uh, the, the services are pending, uh, but we want to get the information out as soon as we hear, hear anything. We'll make sure that we get the word out to you. Um, I pray that you've been praying uh, three times every day, three times every day. I didn't say long prayers. I didn't say you got to drop uh, drop down to your knees with your face to Mother Earth. I'm just saying you need to be praying. You need to be praying. You need to be praying every 
every day. Thank you all so much. Remember, we have prayer tomorrow at seven o'clock. I want to thank those of you that did log on for prayer tonight, even though we changed it. But I appreciate you for being consistent. I appreciate you being consistent. Appreciate that for you. Tonight, tonight, y'all, let's get into tonight's lesson. Tonight's lesson, we're going to be talking about uh, cleansing the temple, the cleansing of the temple. Y'all, he, he, he went into the temple and cleansed temple. Y'all, let's get the chat moving. Y'all, y'all know, you know, you know, we, we're a little early. We're a little early. So let's, let's, let's make sure we, we get this, get this thing going tonight. Um, let's, let's get it going. Um, Matthew, Mark 11, verse 15 through 18, Mark 11, uh, Mark 11, verse 15 through 18, Mark 11, verse 15 through 18 says, says this, uh, on reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts being and began driving out those who were buying and selling uh, there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and, and the benches and, and, and those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise uh, through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, "It is it not written, my house will be called the house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. I want to talk about the cleansing the cleansing, the cleansing of the temple, the cleansing of the temple. Um, we have entered the Holy Week. We have entered Holy Week. We have this, this, this Jesus um, mind shift mode. We have this uh, exclusive insight into what Jesus is doing. We have this, this, this movement where he's. Um, He's, he's walking into Jerusalem, preparing for his uh, eternal sacrifice to be made, that he's come to Jerusalem to die. He, he has uh, come that the people can see him. They can, uh, he can do what they said he was going to do. And he gets to the house of his father. And he is in the house that should be dedicated for worship for his father. And when he gets there, it's not the way he thought it should have been. Let me pause for a second and just drop this, this question on us tonight. Have you ever thought about what it would be like if Jesus showed up to our church today? <sighs> Have you ever taken a moment to say, you know, what would happen if Jesus showed up to the house of God? Oh, I'm not saying the spirit. I'm not saying the, 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 the I'm saying the man Christ Jesus. What would you do if Jesus showed up to worship? Mm. Y'all, he, he has, he's in a mindset. How do you know he's in a mindset? Because the text tells us before he gets to the temple, he runs into a unproductive fig tree. Y'all don't want to hear me. It might as well be called a tree because it's not producing figs. It's not doing anything. It's not doing its job. And so what he says is cursed. He cursed the fig tree. Y'all don't want to hear me tonight. He cursed the fig tree and he takes the fig tree and he, he does what? He curses it that it will never, ever produce. Y'all don't want to hear me tonight. He curses the fig tree and then he gets to the temple of his father. And he finds out mm -hmm, that it's active, but there's no anointing. Mm, that it's packed, but the motives aren't pure. 
He goes into the temple and finds out and figures out and puts two and two together that something has, something has to change. Yeah, yeah. Anybody besides me that understand that, that sometimes you come to church and you say, this is not good enough for my God, people wonder why you push for excellence in the kingdom. Why do we have to do so many things? Why does it, it don't take all of that for me. I don't understand why we're doing this. I don't like that we're doing that. But the truth of the matter is, is that some of us understand that some of the stuff that happens in church, y'all don't want to hear me tonight. It is not of God. It is not from, y'all don't want to hear me. It is not of God. It is not from God. It is not what he intended or desired for his house to be. How many places of worship do we have that if Jesus showed up, he would turn some tables? Y'all don't want to hear me. Three things. I'm going to get out of here. I promise y'all we ain't going to be here alone tonight. Uh, three things. I'm going to get out of here. Three three things. I promise you we're going to be done. The, the first thing that he does, we, we, we see in this text, is the condemnation of corruption. Mm. He condemns those who are corrupt. <sighs> I'm never liked when people uh, 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 do that are doing wrong don't want to be told they're wrong. Ah, Y'all don't want to hear me tonight. The, the verse 15 and 16, on reaching Jerusalem, he entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned tables, the tables of money, changers, and the benches that those were selling doves. Watch this, y'all. He throws tables over to symbolize the rejection of corrupt practices. If the church is the place to 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 for the healing to happen, for the, the miracle to be experienced, for breakthroughs to, to come for, why do I have to come to church? Y'all don't want to hear me tonight and be taken advantage of when God was happy with one thing, man has required a whole nother level. Y'all don't want to hear me tonight. They are, they have, they have taken the, 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 the coins and exchanged them for animals of sacrifice to make penance to get back in right relationship. But the people in the church were taking advantage of the church people. Let me stop for a second because I don't want to make sure that we, we I want to make sure that we, we got clarity in the conversation is that some of us have, have really messed this thing up because we've told people that this is God's way of saying that the church should not sell anything. No, the church shouldn't take advantage of anybody. Y'all don't want to hear me today. He didn't have a problem with the exchange because people didn't all have the same uh, uh, employ. They could, all couldn't bring, y'all don't hear me, they all couldn't bring a dove. They weren't raising doves. They all couldn't bring a goat. They weren't all raising goats. So there had to be a place where what, what, what was used for the sacrifice could be exchanged, y'all don't want to hear me, for what was being, what, 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 what sin was ma being made penance for. So what you have to understand in the text that I'm needing you to grab a hold to, because it's blessing me so well tonight, is that what God is literally saying is, is if you take advantage of people that are trying their best, I'll turn the tables over. Why is this important? It's because we've taught this weak, uh, uh, soft, uh, mm. Ooh, I had to catch myself. We've taught this weak Jesus that is lowly and, and humble, but, but, but he's a man of many opinions. He's a man of many facets. He's a man of many opinions. He's a man that don't take uh, one stance on everything. He is, he is the God that, that, that can be as, 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 as turntables 
as he is forgiving. Ooh, don't think you're going to always get the one that's meek and lowly. Sometimes he'll turn this thing upside down. And if you want to see an angry Jesus display corruption in the temple. Woo! Watch this, y'all. Understand that the selling was not about abusing. It wasn't, it was the abuse. It was taking advantage of people. Jesus, watch this. Jesus comes in and tells them, you cannot do what you've been doing in this sacred place. Why is this super important? It's because the doves and the things that they were selling for sacrifice were things that he was about to take the place of those things. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus came to take the place of the sacrifices, then you have to understand what he had to go through because the sacrifice had to be pure. Oh, I need somebody in my name. That, 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 that contaminated sacrifice will always cause a problem because people will always try to get out of it a cheap way. But if you don't understand that if it didn't cost you anything, it ain't worth anything. Y'all don't want to hear me tonight. Can I, can I pause for a second and get off of these people and get on to us and talk about it? It's not just about corruption in the temple. It's about is your worship, is your appreciation, is your is your gratitude, does it cost you something? Woo. Am I talking good tonight? That, 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 that some of us don't understand that when you give God tainted sacrifice, then you have to, you must understand, Jesus will turn a table over. I know, I know, I know some of us are addicted to conviction. We are convicted, con uh, we are addicted to condemnation. But we are allergic to conversion. The problem with us is that we don't understand that sometimes you're going to have to change. Y'all don't want to hear me. Let me get out of this thing. First thing is the condemnation of corruption. That Jesus, anytime he comes into the room, will condemn corruption. Second thing is a call to communion. Mm. Ah, what does that mean? It's an intimate time. It is a, 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 a understanding time. It is a, a private time to uplift. After he overturns, watch the order in which he does it in. After he overturns tables, watch this. He does not just whip you. He leaves you with a word. Mm. The Bible says it like this. Let me bring it up because I want to make sure we in this thing together. Verse 17, verse 17 says, and he taught them. He said, it is, is it not written my house will be called the house of prayer for all nations? Watch this. But you have made it a den of thieves. He didn't just fuss and complain. He sat down and made it plain. Anybody besides me excited about the fact that even when God corrects you, he comes down and teaches you. He comes down and, and, and makes sure that you understand why you got what you got and had to go through what you had to go through. Aren't you happy he didn't leave it up for just anybody to make the decision for you? That he literally came down and said, y'all doing this wrong, but he took time to tell you how to make that thing how to make it right. He said, God knows what you've done. He, he, he doesn't leave you with the whip. He brings a word. Mm. He teaches the actions behind, he teaches you the why behind his action. Watch this. And the great thing about this is that it's actually the complete opposite of what Jesus normally does. What do you mean, Pastor? is that normally you see Jesus teaching and then walking out. Mm -hmm. I said again, normally you see Jesus teaching it and then he's walking it out. But in this text, you see him walking it out and then telling you why he did what he did. 
Y'all don't want to hear me. That, that you have to understand that every time you see him move, you should have heard him tell you why he did it. Y'all don't want to hear me. That every now and then, you ought to understand that God is not calling for, for, for counselation. He's calling for communion. He's trying to bring you together. Anybody besides me appreciate the fact that he is here to bring us back together. Y'all don't want to hear me. That he's trying to get you in right standing. He's trying to get you back in communion. He's trying to get you back where you're supposed to be. Watch this, y'all. A personal reflection. Jesus, watch this. Jesus' actions prompt self-reflection. But you've made it a den of thieves. You've caused problems. You've caused issues. You've caused dilemma. How many of us can say, man, I don't think I've done my part. I hadn't always done what I thought was right. I hadn't always participated the way I should have participated. I hadn't always given the best that I should give. I hadn't always uh, uh, supplied the way that they, my, 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 my offering has been tainted. Watch this, not just in financial, but sometimes what I, my talent and my my, my, my time has been tainted. My, my my body's in worship, but my mind is somewhere else. Uh, sometimes my gift, I hadn't, I hadn't really sharpened my gift the way I wanted to because I didn't understand what it was. A call to communion is a call of correction. He says, my house should be called the house of prayer for all. Y'all don't want to hear me tonight that the struggle that he is trying to explain to the people of God is, is that, hey, y'all keep trying to keep, keep, keep walking through this thing and you trying to figure out why you got it hard, why you, why you hadn't gotten, how you hadn't received, received the things that you're trying to receive, why you haven't been able to, to, to live the life that you want to live. And the problem is, is that you cannot get from God at the level that you see and are desiring to receive from him when you've given him tainted sacrifice. He says, my house shall be called the house of prayer. But you've made it a den, a den of thieves. And he's teaching them why, what they would do. Watch this, y'all. If you really want to know what godly teaching is, it makes you leave. It might hurt you, but it makes you, 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 makes you better. And he starts teaching the people about how to treat the house of God. The Bible says, verse 18, let's get this one off the screen because we're going to the last one and going home. Verse 18, the chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill, watch this, to kill him. For they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. Y'all don't want to hear me tonight. In the words of Dr. Michael P. Williams, they when he opened blinded eyes, they did nothing. When he when he raised the dead, they got frustrated. When he uh, when he when he was uh, fixing with the hands, they mumbled. When he when he was forgiving sins, they had bad thoughts. But when he went in there and started messing with church people money, they started building a cross. Third and final point of Jesus cleansing the, the temple. Not only does it com uh, con uh, condemnation of corruption. Second is that it's a call to communion. Third and final thing, it's an uncovering of character. Ooh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done all by myself tonight. That it's undone uh, of, of character. It's uncovered. Because when God knows what you've done with his house, watch this. We have all have to get called out. Ooh. When you've messed up the house of God, taken advantage of the people of God, done incorrupt, uh, corruptible things. I'm not saying you have to be perfect because God will never expect you to keep a, a level that you've never been able to do. What he's saying is, y'all don't want to hear me tonight, is that God, when God's correction comes, it will always uncover your character. Is that you can't, you cannot... Watch this. It was not his teaching because once he whipped them, he loved on them. 
it was their thoughts. Because who is he to talk to us like that? Who is he? Y'all don't want to hear me to move the people. He can't preach that good. He wasn't that good of a teacher that all of them like him. Now, let's kill him. He's messed up our financial structure and infrastructure and, and philosophy. Kill him. Just two days ago, you were crying, Hosanna, to the highest. Today, your thoughts are, oh, I think we need to go on and take this boy. Take this boy out of here. Because Jesus' pure actions will always show your desire and your lack of purity. Let me say it again. Jesus' pure heart will always show how contaminated you are. And every now and then, you have to decide what foot you will stand on. And this is Holy Week, and I need y'all to hear me tonight. You need to decide what foot you're willing to stand on to tell God, hey, I love you, I adore you, I appreciate you, but God, I don't know. This thing is heavy, but I love you. I promise you, I, I, I can't do nothing better than what you've done for me. You, <clears throat> their character was displayed. They could have said, thank you for fixing my issue. And we we got off track and we we had a problem, an issue, a, a situation that we, 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 we went astray, but they didn't. They came in and said, we'd rather have that stuff than him. You, you 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 don't understand that 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 what he teaches is if you go after me I'll get you the stuff but what they said is give us the stuff we don't really care for you because you come with issues situations and circumstances and how many people are watching me tonight if you had to pick between the stuff that you've had to ac accumulate over the years or the purity of god's heart have you given god what he desires oh my god today he's dropping this in my spirit that some of us have not understood the stuff that we've went through, the battles we've had to fight, the struggles we've had to go through, the things we've had to battle to get our lives in place, in order, and in check. And you sitting here going through all hell, and you've tried everything besides letting Jesus tie this thing up. Let, let if, 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 if he wreck it, it's fine, because it's wrecked with love. Y'all don't want to hear me. He comes in and says, my house shall be called the house of prayer. I'm through. But they decided with the honor. <laughs> they come in, they came in and said, listening to what he said is going to cause a problem for our economics. And I'd rather have the economics than the savior. Watch this, y'all. They never said, look at this text. I want y'all to see. They never said he's not the son of God. They never said he, 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 we don't, we don't know, we don't believe who he is. The chief priests and teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him. For they feared him. Watch this, y'all. Because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. They wasn't killing him because he flipped tables over. They, they, they were ready to kill him because he got everybody on his side. Because if you want to understand how the devil really works, if you really want to think about how the enemy gets into this thing, if you really want to understand how the enemy wins, he's not focused on the stuff you think he's focused on. He's grabbed one issue. Y'all see how they, they saying amen? That's causing a problem with that. We're going to have to kill them. And the people that should be saving lives start plotting to take one. I'm done. This is extra. Watch anytime you're so far out of your arena that you start doing things that's the opposite of what you were put here to do. 
that people didn't have a problem with him when he was out in the wilderness. People didn't have a problem when he was on the back hills of a mountain. People didn't have a problem with him when he was feeding 5,000 in an underclothed location. Nobody had an issue when he was badly teaching on a, on a, on a boat. Nobody had a problem. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Don't, nobody had a problem when he was calming the winds and the waves. The big problem started when he got into the temple with a set of standards. Ooh, I'm gonna bless somebody tonight. He got into the temple with a set of standards and the people got on one accord and said, what he's saying makes sense. That's when the enemy says, you got to kill him. <laughs> see, see, the problem with us is, and I'm done, I'm, I've been done. Y'all don't wanna hear me. I'm just, this is overtime, that the enemy is really sending us into a situation because we're going to have to open our eyes and our ears that if we ever get on one accord, even the enemy knows what we can achieve. Because when Jesus got the people on one accord, the enemy says, we got to kill them. Understand this, and I'm through. <clears throat> Anytime the enemy comes in against you, it's because he's seen, watch this, not that he has the authority to peek into your future. That's not it. He knows the signs of blessings. And when they're headed your way, he knows how his father works. Even though he's been kicked out, he knows the plan of his father. He knows the mindset of his father. He knows the, the, the language of his father. And when, when the enemy sees God about to do something for you, how God lines that thing up. He'll put something in your path to detour you around it. So you'll miss where God is taking you. You don't want to hear me. Because you get stuck on you. And what you didn't understand was they plotted on you from the moment the people started listening to what you were saying. I'm done. Because when Jesus cleanses the temple, three things happen. The condemnation of corruption. The call to communion. And three, the uncovering of character. I'm done. Let's pray. God, I love you. God, I thank you. I, I adore you. God, thank you for your people, your time today, for your anointing, your love, your peace, your power. God, thank you for your people that have watched tonight, God, as we kicked off on um, Sunday, these Holy Week services, God, let us not be fatigued in these, that we uh, don't get weary in well-doing, that we appreciate what you're doing and how you're doing it and when you're doing it, that we see you clearly, we see your love, your hand, your mercy, your, your caring, your, your, your signs of, of, of appreciation of, of, of everything that you've done for us, God. I pray that Sunday worship and Friday worship, uh, God, that, that lives are changed, miracles are experienced, signs and wonders are, are felt in and through the building. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, we do pray and ask these things. Amen. Y'all, I love y'all. Thank y'all so much. I got something in my eye. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm looking to the left and right. I got screens and, and stuff all over here. I'm trying to make sure I, I'm chat is frozen on, on one screen. So thank y'all so much. I appreciate you all. Y'all, Tuesday nights, Tuesday nights, we give, we give, we give. If you did not give on Sunday, I know we we we, we dismissed church. God came and wrecked that thing Sunday. God came and wrecked that thing Sunday. Sunday was amazing. Right, let me pause for a second and say Sunday. Sunday was amazing. So, so, so if you did not get a chance, the glory was so heavy. You didn't give, get a chance to give Sunday. Uh, I'm going to ask that you do that tonight. Uh, on, also, on top of that, let's give our Tuesday night seed that we give every Tuesday, every Tuesday, every Tuesday. We give a seed on Tuesday night. So let's prepare to do that. Let's prepare to do that. Thank you all so much. I appreciate each and every one of you all. Um, let's do that. If you didn't give, if you didn't give your tithe, you can give that tonight online. You can give on text. You can give through the website. Thank you all so much. I see you all already. Um, I'm a gift tonight. I'm a gift tonight. Remember, remember, we have prayer tomorrow night. Prayer tomorrow night. We're gonna be praying tomorrow night at seven o'clock on Zoom. 
I'm 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 seeing it. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. I appreciate y'all. Even those of you that 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 I see now on Facebook that 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 went to Zoom. I appreciate your consistency. It's out of habit. I appreciate it, though. I promise you, I do. I appreciate it. Um, let's do that. Let's do that tonight. Let's give tonight. Uh, let's give tonight. Um, let's give tonight. Let's do that. I appreciate you all. I love you all. Y'all know Tuesday night, Wednesday night, we have prayer on Zoom. Friday night, we have uh, service at 7 p.m. in the room. Y'all check your emails, check your emails, check your emails. We sent our emails this week. Our, our pastor has been working diligently to make sure that we stay in communication with each and every one of you all. Let's pray for the Mays family. Let's continue to pray for them and the loss of uh, Miss uh, Mother Mays. Uh, let's continue to pray for them. I appreciate you all. I love you all. Y'all don't forget, um, if you have not already, bring your clothes this Sunday. Bring your clothes this Sunday. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna donate those clothes this Sunday. We're in our time of prayer, our time of prayer. Y'all, I appreciate y'all. This Sunday, we plan to pack the pews. I don't care what you came. I don't know what you came to. I don't want to say I don't care. I don't know what you came to do. But we came to pack them pews this Sunday at seven at 10 a.m. This Sunday, 10 a.m., pack the pews out, Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. Invite everybody to church with you this Sunday. I love you. I appreciate you all. See you all tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Uh, be blessed. Lift him up. <clears throat>